Hello and welcome to my latest tutorial on flashing your GTX 980 with a high performance ROM image. Today, we'll review the precautions and procedure for flashing the EVGA GTX 980 Superclocked ACX2 edition. The ROM file and flashing tools that we're going to use today are available for download on my website at trickmasterpc.com. This ROM can be used on any GTX 980 reference card from any manufacturer. If you have an EVGA classified dual or triple ROM card or similar non-reference 980, then be advised that you should not use this ROM. So you may be wondering why you would want to flash your GTX 980 with a customized ROM instead of using your typical overclocking software. Well, the answer is simple. It's to achieve the highest level of stable performance under all conditions. The ROM we're about to flash has a 1700 megahertz core clock limiter and an increased core voltage limiter to support the higher clock speeds, as well as several other voltage supply and memory tweaks to support higher stable boost clocks. On water cooling while gaming, you'll see a constant boost clock that ranges from 1404 megahertz up to 1470 megahertz. Additionally, you can use EVGA's Precision X overclocking and monitoring software to boost the core clock even further, all the way up to 1700 megahertz if desired. Anything above the 1700 megahertz limit would require external voltage modding and is only recommended for extreme benchmarking and record breaking. Now, I have to warn you that flashing your card may void your manufacturer's warranty. And if you lose power during the flashing process, you will likely brick your card. If your flash goes south for any reason, just contact me through the comments below and I can help to resolve most issues. Please ensure that you have adequate air or water cooling before flashing. If you decide to stick with air cooling, I highly recommend that you replace your stock GPU thermal compound with Antec 7 Nano Diamond Thermal Compound. It delivers damn near 100% thermal transfer efficiency and surpasses the thermal performance of all other compounds on the market. It takes about 30 minutes to remove your air heatsink and replace the thermal compound. Just be sure to spread it evenly and as thinly as possible over the entire GPU. If your system is currently overclocked, please revert your OC settings back to defaults before flashing to ensure maximum stability during the flashing process. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the flashing process. So the first thing you want to do is go to my uh, website, trickmasterpc.com, and download the GTX 980 flash package. Um, I have that zip folder here. And so what you'll do is extract those files and then move that uh, NV flash directory that we have here with these four files in it to the root directory of your C drive. Uh, one thing that I want to note about this uh, GTX 980 ROM that I've modified here is that it exceeds the uh, factory performance specs of the Hydrocopter Edition and also the Classified Edition. Okay, uh, the next step is to disable your current NVIDIA display driver. So you'll want to right-click on my computer, go to Manage, click on Device Manager, expand your display adapters tree. Right click on both of your display adapters here and select disable. Now for the purpose of this recording, I'm not actually going to disable it uh, because that'll mess up my screen cap, but you'll disable both display adapters. Your resolution is going to go to shit. Excuse my language. It will, um, but don't worry about that. Um, then you're going to want to open up GPU Z. And once you have GPU Z open up, there's a, uh, ROM chip icon with a green arrow on it, and that's located right here. Click on that and select Save to File. That will save a copy of your stock ROM image in case you need to flash back to stock, in case you need to RMA your card. Uh, you know, before you RMA, you definitely want to flash your ROM back to the stock ROM. Uh, when you save that file, it's going to look like this, gm204.rom. So just hang on to that, store it somewhere safe, maybe upload it to Google Drive or something so you don't lose it in case your computer crashes. Now that you've disabled your display adapters, you saved a backup copy of your ROM file. It's time to start the flashing process. So you're gonna, in Windows 8, you're gonna right click um, on the start menu down here and you're gonna select command prompt admin. 
In Windows 7, you want to op you want to open up Command Prompt uh, as an administrator. You're going to change the directory to um, C drive NV flash. In this directory, you're going to type in NV flash 980 tweak dot rom and a dash six. With the dash six, it's just shorthand for um, override PCIe uh, subsystem. And essentially, what that's going to do is it's it's going to go and look for um, your NVIDIA display adapters. It's going to try to match the ROM file that you have on the adapter with the ROM file that you have um, on your computer. It's going to make sure that the vendor IDs match and so forth. The override is just it's going to ignore all of that matching criteria. So if you have other graphics cards that aren't GTX 980s in your system or any other expansion card, I would highly recommend removing it from your system before you do this flashing process. Um, using NV Flash, there are some commands that you can use to target your cards, uh, and that's the index command. And you can Google search how to use that index command if you if you don't want to remove uh, additional cards from your system. Then you can target the flash to specific cards based on their index. When you execute that command, it takes a few uh, moments. Um, it'll identify your adapter, and it'll it'll uh, you know basically say, "Oh, do you want to flash this?" And you hit yes, you hit Y for yes. It's going to flash that card. Um, it can take anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute. As soon as that flash is done, you'll hear an audible beep. And then uh, it'll tell you that it's completed. If you have another card, if you have a two-way SLI or three-way or four-way, then it'll find the next adapter in the sequence. It'll ask you to flash that one. When it's done, it'll find the next card in the sequence, and it'll ask you to flash that one and so forth. When it's completely done, it'll tell you that no more matching adapters are found, and you can exit NV Flash and then restart your computer. There is one other thing that I would like to note. It is absolutely critical that you <laughs> disable your display adapters before flashing. Very critical that you do that, okay? Otherwise you can brick your card. Uh, also, this version of NV Flash is a modified version that works with the GTX 980s. So we basically took the, the, the original version of NV Flash that was uh, available for the 780s, modified it a little bit so that it works with the 980s. So. Don't try to use uh, a different version of NV Flash. Yet. Get the version from my website if you want to ensure a successful flash. Okay, so after you've done the flashing process, and obviously I can't do that right now because my display adapter is enabled and I'm screen recording. Uh, it's a pretty simple, straightforward process here. After you've restarted your computer, you can open up GPU-Z again, and you can take a look at uh, the changes that have been applied. You may or may not see the adjusted boost clock variable here, but you will see it says, uh, please note that the currently active clock frequencies may differ. You can watch those on the sensors tab. Uh, you'll notice right away though, that when you launch a 3D accelerated application, uh, like a game like Battlefield 4, um, Adobe Premiere, anything like that, and you start doing video rendering or you start playing video games, you'll see that boost clock really go above the 1400 megahertz. I've seen it go as high as 1470 on my system uh, just by itself you know, using the uh, Turbo Boost technology, but you can use EVGA's Precision X and you can really, really push your cards with this ROM. That's it. If you guys like the tutorial, please click on an advertisement. Uh, that really helps to support my tutorials. You know, I get a few pennies for every click on an ad. And if you can, if you have any questions, if you need any kind of support, just hit me up in the comments or hit me up through my website because I'm always monitoring uh, the comments and emails that I receive through my website and I can help you kind of troubleshoot any issues that you're having. Thanks again.